As the resident medieval enthusiast and expert amongst my friends, the task has always fallen to me to provide costumes for events such as LARPs or Renaissance fairs. Today I'm showing you how to make your own basic medieval costume with nothing but what you already have at home and sharing some tips about what you should look to avoid. Getting into medieval costuming can be a little bit intimidating. There's lots to learn, lots to look at, tons of historical intricacies, and not to mention, it can be expensive. Watch on and you'll see that with the right mindset, it doesn't have to be. In fact, these are just my suggestions. I highly encourage you to do your own research and do your own experiments to see what you could come up with. The theme for today's video is start now, have fun, and worry about being perfect later. Just as a disclaimer, I am going to be talking mostly to the guys today because honestly, we need a lot more help with this stuff. I'm also currently not equipped to showcase women's clothing because... Hi. Don't worry if you are a fair lady though, I've got you covered, you will be clothed. It's just a lot easier for you to reach into a closet, pull out a puffy sleeved blouse, and look perfect. In fact, ladies, go ahead and share this video with a male friend of yours who needs to get on your level. Speaking of levels, costumes today are split into levels, which denote the amount of work that it takes to put the costumes together, and also the quality of the finished look. So the most basic outfit is level one, and is the absolute barest minimum that isn't just blue jeans and sneakers. The materials and cuts won't be historically accurate, but if you're just starting, if you're actually level one, there's no reason to be concerned with any of the rest of that stuff yet, and you'll still be able to put together a costume like this for free. And when all else fails, remember that a universal rule is that if you throw a belt on over your clothing, you instantly look more medieval. So costumes start from the ground up, and just like in real life, guys, people notice your shoes. It doesn't matter how good your upper half looks or how big your sword is, if you're wearing sneakers, boom, your immersion is instantly broken. Girls wear boots more often than guys do, so it might not be easy for you to just reach down and pick up a pair of riding boots. Hint, girls, that's what you should do. If you have leather boots, wear them. They fit, I promise, unless they're like, blue. But here are some suggestions. So chukkas actually can pass for medieval shoes with the right color. Uh, leather combat boots like this are also a decent choice, especially if you are going to be more active or athletic throughout the day. But if you have Chelsea boots or any variation of an ankle boot with monk straps, those are really the ideal thing. And if you're flat-footed or you have knee problems or you just want to be more comfortable throughout the day, what you can do is take the inserts from your favorite pair of sneakers and put them into your medieval shoes for the day. Now, you could buy inserts, but again, I'm trying to help you save money. Sweatpants or joggers of any variety will work for level one. Just avoid blue jeans or dress pants. Chinos can work depending on what you're wearing over them. I would just say that the less pockets that are visible, the better. You want to choose neutral colors, not drab colors, just neutral, like nothing crazy. Try to use pants with as little elastic as possible. But guys, go for the good old-fashioned sweatpants. You will be so comfortable, I promise you. I mean, like, you could go out and buy these, but what you're really paying for is the proper material. And this design hasn't changed in centuries. Now, girls, if you want to wear pants, all of these same rules apply to you. Or you might have a... Uh, wrap skirt that is in this sort of neo-medieval style, or you might even have a dress that is just in this early medieval or Viking style. Henleys are your friends. Long sleeve, short sleeve, Henleys can pass really well for medieval wear. I have these linen Henleys and also these Asian collar style dress shirts, but honestly, even cotton, modern cotton Henleys, like from H&M, work really well. Now your instinct might be to reach for a dress shirt. Please ignore this instinct. I understand it. I have also done it. You look at the collar, you look at the slightly puffy sleeves, and then you look at a pirate shirt and you think, oh, it's perfect. 
No, it actually looks so, so odd. The collar stiffness and the cuffs and then the cut at the bottom of the shirt just make it look so modern and so formal. Don't do it. That and pirates aren't medieval anyway. I mean, yes, it's called a renaissance fair, but the whole thing is an anachronism anyway once people get involved. I mean, you have folks dressing up as skunk witches, Henleys. You're fine. Optionally, you could also go for a waffle textured thermal underwear sort of shirt like this. This is obviously a second choice to the Henley, but the texture actually adds a little interesting dimension to your costume. I would say especially do this if you have something that you are going to layer on top of this shirt, just to give it a little bit more depth. Gentlewomen, have you a blouse? Then don it rightly. If thou a tender bardeau top have, would be perfect. You know, while I was doing the research for this video, I looked through articles of like top 30 women's shirt styles, and I swear, almost all of them fit for a starting medieval costume. I mean, none of them are historically accurate, but they are all believable. I mean, everything short of like athletic wear and spaghetti straps would pass. In fact, let me know if this has happened to anyone else. You're just out shopping somewhere, and then out of the corner of your eye, you see, what's this? A slightly medieval looking garment? Badass, it's for women. Now, everything from level one transfers up to level two. The only difference is that with level two, perhaps you've upgraded the material type uh, that each of your garments are made out of. Now, in addition to those other base pieces, we can add other things. For instance, if you have a long, modern, sort of trendy knitted cardigan, I don't know how popular or prevalent those are, go ahead and add that. You can throw a belt over it. If it's got a hood, nice. Now that I'm thinking about it, women are probably more likely to have those too. But a good alternative is if you go ahead and take a hoodie that you don't care about, that's neutral colored and doesn't have any glaring trademarks on it, then go ahead and cut the sleeves off and then throw a belt over that. And I was actually surprised with how good this looked for what it is. For these outer layer garments, of level two or above, which you really want to avoid are Halloween costume grade tabards or tunics or what have you. They're not sized properly, their color schemes can border from neon to almost plasticky. Essentially, they just look like costumes. Whereas if you wear your own pieces, they'll look less out of place because they're not costumes. They're actually clothes. They were designed to be clothes. And then finally for level two, go ahead and add a blanket cloak. All you need is a neutral or solid color blanket and a safety pin. Just go ahead and pin it on the underneath side so that the pin is invisible and no one will even know that you're using one. They may guess, but they'll never be able to prove it. And I won't tell them, it'll be our little secret. Now, if you have a blanket that you don't really care about, you can go ahead and stick a brooch through it. I like that blanket, so I'm not gonna demonstrate on it, but check this out. If you don't have a brooch, just use a nail. Little medieval hack for you. Thin wall mounting pinhead nail and stick that through the fabric and that's gonna hold. And it's not gonna stab you or anything either. And that's almost exactly how the Vikings did their cloaks. Now, here's a little bit of key insight here. We're starting small and everyone has to start somewhere. It's not a race. You should set yourself up for success by not having expectations higher than you can feasibly achieve. Don't aim for costuming as a knight if you can't afford the gear yet. And that might sound harsh, but it's actually really cool, especially for LARPing, because then you're thoughtfully using your costume design to tell the story of your character development. I mean, ultimately the goal is to have fun, so do whatever you want, but if you can kill it in a peasant's costume and look authentic and really good, then do that. Get compliments for having an epic peasant costume and then build on it later. And if you do use these tips and you get compliments while you're out, make sure to mention me and raise the banner of my channel to spread it to new lands. Thanks, I appreciate you. Now, level three is for those who want to put a bit more work into actually modifying their clothes without having to make brand new garments. Repurposing, recycling, nature. Everything from level one or level two obviously also scales up into level three. But the bad news here is that you will need to know how to do 
a back stitch. The good news is that back stitches are super easy and there is a two and a half minute tutorial linked down in the description box below. Now, if you missed last week's video, I will go ahead and link that up here and down in the description where I showed you how to make this medieval style towel with nothing but an old hoodie, a pair of scissors, a needle, and about a foot of thread. It's super easy and it looks really good and it literally takes your costume from level one to level three and beyond. This could last you for years before it needed to be replaced. And it's unisex. Hoods are unisex. Hoods are universal. All hail hoods. Now take those hoodie sleeves and turn them into hose. No, get your mind out of the gutter. Take a gander at these, you sexy, sexy goose. No, seriously, check these out. These are just my hoodie sleeves, and all I've done is I've taken a strip of fabric and I've backstitched them to the top edge here so that I can tie them to a rope around my waist, and then you instantly have this medieval-looking layer added on. If you have the fabric, go ahead and cut two long strips and you can use them as leg wraps or arm wraps if you wanted to. You could use a bit of that old blanket that you don't care about that's also going to be your cloak, or you could use the body of the hoodie that you've just cut up, repurposing the whole thing. And now you have even more layers to your costume, and layers really help bring costumes to life. They make them look lived in and purposeful. And if you make leg wraps like these, they're also gonna help hide whatever elastics you have at the bottom of your pants and help hide that modernism a little bit more. And now you have items in your costume wardrobe that are color coordinated with each other. Thank you for joining me today. I really hope I inspired you to start building your own medieval costume. As always, if you got value, if you liked the video, please like the video and share it with a friend who you want to go costuming with you to your next event. If you're joining me for the first time, I want to thank you especially for watching my video, and I do hope you consider subscribing and that I see you in future videos. Now that you're fully equipped, go out and have fun, and good luck on your adventures.